Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to do dynamic memory allocation in C++. Up until now we've only done static allocation. So an example of static allocation is something like I have in this struct here where I've declared a string and I've listed a handful of variable names, this int here. And all of this we need to have hard-coded before we actually run our program. What we want to move to is actually being able to allocate memory and create variables essentially uh, when the program is already running. So for example, how to read in a file. So this is a fairly short, simple file, but what if this file was arbitrarily, or maybe not arbitrarily large, but if this file was very large and we didn't know how large it was exactly, we should still be able to write a loop for that, put in this data, maybe do something with it, analyze it, and then output it later. And uh, currently we don't have the tools to do that, so that's what we're gonna be working on today. Uh, one of the things, or a couple of things that we're going to be using is this new command, and uh, I've just got a couple of examples and delete command. So the new command is how we allocate new memory uh, on the heap for our, in this case, our integer, or you could do a struct or what have you, and this struct up here is just for, for help, and this is how you would delete it. Uh, here we have a new, uh, new array of integers, and then we have the correct delete function for it. I just listed some of these out for you. Now whenever we we allocate memory dynamically in the program, uh, this is this would be one way we, we could do it down here. And you, as you can see, we have a pointer that we're declaring and then we're calling new and student info. So we're creating a new struct of this type up here and we have a pointer to it. And normally what you'll be doing is actually creating a array of pointers because you're not going to be able to name all these variables because you don't even know how many you have. So how would you possibly be able to name all of them? And so normally what we'll be doing and what we'll be doing today a little bit is creating an array of pointers that point to the struct that we've declared. So we'll go ahead and get to that. Move over here to this code. So up at the top here, uh, you can see I have a file stream. So you want to know how to read in files. If you haven't watched that video, you'll need it for this one. Uh, we also have our struct here, the student info struct, and we're saving some information on, on our student, first name, last name, date of birth, and their age. Here I've got a couple of functions that I'm going to be calling. I'm just pre-declaring them here. So we've got add student, and we can see this passes in an array of pointers of type student info. So it's passing an array of pointers to this struct up here. And then after that, we've got some strings, integers, etc. Nothing too important though out here. And then uh, we've got our print function, which we do the same. We're just passing in our array of pointers so that we can print that out and then delete. So whenever we dynamically allocate memory, this is something new. And we also have to we also have to deallocate that memory manually whenever we do that. And I'll explain more about that later. Oops, sorry. Scroll down here a little bit. So here I have our sample file. You can see I'm reading that in. I'm, I'm uh, putting it into the sample file class. And then I've got a couple of strings declared first name, last name, temp string. The reason I chose different names for, for this string, first name, and then I have different ones in our struct, and I think I probably have a third uh, example of down here, is I just wanted to show that all of these, all these variables, even though they're being used for the exact same thing, are not the same. They're not in the same scope, and so that's why I left them with slightly different names. I hope it's not too confusing. So here I have our array of pointers of type student info. And it's only size four. We'll learn how to do this of different sizes uh, and deal with that later on. And then this next line, I see out this array of pointers. And the reason I'm doing this, while we're not going to go into arrays today, uh, I do just want to show that what, what that's passing in is an address. And just so you can kind of understand the syntax a little bit better. And then here, I'll go ahead and comment that out. And then here we've got our, we're reading in our sample file. We're confirming that it is open. We're reading it in. And then we're passing all these variables into add student which uh, we'll go ahead and move down and take a look at add student. Now add student here, we have our array that we're passing in, uh, then we've got these handful of variables, and then I do have this uh, student count, and that's just so that we know where we're at in our array. Um, there's, again, there's more, uh, there's probably more complicated and better ways to do this, uh, but I just wanna keep it simple for today and just go over just this one concept that I'm trying to drive home really. And so here we have our student array, and then we've got, this is our location, this S count. That's what we passed in here with this, this stew count. So that's telling us the location in our array. And then we're declaring new. So we're declaring a new struct of type student info. And then we're doing all these other lines down here. So we're, we're referencing the same point in our array. And since we have an array of pointers and we're, it's not just a, an array 
it's an array of pointers to structs instead of just an array of structs. Instead of using the dot operator, we actually use this error operator. So this is how we access members uh, when we're talking when we're using a pointer. So we want to access members of this struct, and this this uh, student array here is pointing to our new struct, and so we're just assigning values. So f name is what we have defined in our struct before, and then first in is what we've passed in here, which is what we read in from our file, and then we just continue and go on down. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, after we call add student, then we iterate our student count. So we start in location zero, go all the way to location uh, three, and then here, uh, which have our L statement, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and print this out. So I'll uncomment this out, and I'll build and run this, and all I'm printing out here, I'll show you the printout statement a little bit down here. Uh, you can see that I'm just printing out the student's first and last name. So uh, again, we're passing in the uh, array of pointers to our struct here, and then I'm just iterating it through, and I just, and since I already knew the array size, I went ahead and put it here, and then student array, our location, and then again, we use the error operator now. So this is kind of new. I don't think we've used this until now, instead of the dot operator. And again, we just use that when we have a pointer, as opposed to having just the struct itself. And then student info array, and then our, our last name here. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, and then once we've dynamically allocated this memory, it will not go away unless we delete it ourselves. So uh, I'm calling delete student, and uh, basically this does the same thing as our printout statement up here. So we pass in the array, and we're iterating through this for loop, uh, but what we're doing each time is we're deleting each one of the items in the array. And note that this syntax here is a little bit different than what, what you saw maybe in the last page. When you're actually deleting array, you would do this. This would be the correct syntax, and that would delete the whole array. But this array itself was not dynamically allocated. Uh, it's only the structs inside of the array that we've dynamically allocated. And of course, we will move on to dynamically allocating an array and stuff like that in the future. But for now, this is all we're doing. And so then all we do is close our file and we return out. So uh, that's it for this video, new and delete. Um, our next video, we'll go over the stack and the heap. And it'll help us better understand what exactly we're doing with these new and delete commands. So we'll see you then.